every one. My name is Paul Third, and this week I am going to be discussing quite a controversial topic. It's conversion. So, last week I did the DBX160 shootout, and somebody asked me what a device I used to print the analog DBX 160A through, and I told them that it was the Audion ID14. You basically went in, out, out, in, and printed it into Pro Tools. And as soon as the person that asked found that out, they basically proceeded to tell me that the Audion ID14 isn't optimized to fully get the full potential of the analog gear. Basically, then started to tell me all about well, it's all about dynamic range and bit depth. And I decided, well, know what? I'm just going to test it, okay? Because that's what I do on this channel. My name's Paul Thorpe, and I test stuff. So today we are going to test conversion of that thing, okay? I'm going to let you hear what that sounds like, okay? The conversion of that, and I'm also going to compare that conversion versus a Lynx Aurora converter, two and a half grand converter via Access Analog, and I'm also going to run through some of the stuff that I learned in case it helps you out as well, because it's all useful stuff, and there's loads of useful links that I've got for you as well. So, printing analog gear through budget audio interfaces, am I ruining the audio by going through that? Let's find out. <laughs> So let's kind of run through the very, very quick basics of what I learned, okay? Because it's boring stuff, but it is quite important. So this audio engineer um, was telling me all about dynamic range, and he was basically saying, even your science friend, he's not a scientist, but he's science-based, he likes to do tests, okay? He's not a scientist, he's not got a white lab coat or anything, <laughs> like, when he's mixing those, like, test tubes and shit, you know? And he made a comment basically saying, even your science friend would agree um, that you, if you have um, an analog device that doesn't have the dynamic range to cover the dynamic range of the analog device that you're putting into it, then you're not going to get the optimal quality. Now, as a good example, okay, the DBX160, right, that I've done a shootout of last week, in the manual, it states that it has a dynamic range of 113 dB. That is extremely, <laughs> extremely loud. Extremely loud. But let's just kind of go scientifically, okay? The Audion ID14, okay, the Mark 1, which is what that is, um, has a dynamic range of 116, okay, 116 dB. So on paper, that still has enough dynamic range to cover it. Now, in terms of the audio examples, I'm going to show you later on. Remember, stick it around for those, okay? Um, now, I went into the analog gear, okay, and I was kind of around, like, the 0 dBVU mark, all right? Again, I wasn't hitting it too hard. Sometimes I was going into the red a little bit, but I was going into the analog domain, not clipping it. I was hitting it as hard as I could, going back into the digital domain. Now, guess what the dynamic range of that vocal that I recorded is? It only has 60 dB of dynamic range, okay, right? Just more than half of what that unit can do. Because what you're going to find is, if you record something again through your preamp, and then you go into the analog domain through a compressor or, or an EQ, you gain stage it correctly, you're probably going to find that what you're outputting is probably maybe like 60, 70 dB of dynamic range at the most. And everybody has this thing about bits, and they go, oh, more bits equals more resolution. But there's a fantastic video um, that an engineer sent me. I'll leave a link here in the description. It's fantastic. And all he does is he takes 24 bit converts it down to 8-bit, and what you find is that when he nulls it, all the music is completely gone, and all he's left with is noise. Now, in terms of bits, it's, it's math, it's been scientifically proven that bit depth and higher bit depth does not result in higher resolution. A lot of people I've spoke to have got this thing where they, they, they go, I want to get a better conversion because it's 24 bit. What you've got to remember is, right, in the DBX like 160 right, it's 113 um, dB of dynamic range, okay? Um, that's not 24 bit, I mean, what is it, 18 bit or something like that? Let's just say, for example, it's 18 bit. Now, what you've got to remember is, right, now this is something I didn't know, in terms of dynamic range, you have your full dynamic range, which is what you're going to find in the manual, but in terms of, I've read it, they call it an available dynamic range, okay? Now, an available dynamic range is the dynamic range that is above the noise floor, okay? So your actual dynamic range is when you take away all that noise, all that THD, your synad and stuff like that, that like you take all that gump away, then you're left with true dynamic range. Before you know it, you've had an 18 bit down to 15, 16 bit. Now for anybody that's wanting to calculate all this by themselves, one bit is 60 dB. That's, that's as simple as that, that's how you figure it out, okay? So 60 dB would be 10 bits, okay? It'd be 10 bit audio, that's how it is. It's as simple as that, okay? So this then brings me back to the next thing that I learned, is that there is no magic in these 24-bit converters. So for example, right, the DBX160A, if I was to stick that through a 24-bit converter, 
okay? And it was basically had a dynamic range of like 15, 16 bit. What the converter is going to output is 15, 16 bit. Converters only convert what's being fed into it. If it's being fed 15 bit, it'll output 15 bit, okay? And what you need to learn is what I've learned as well. I've looked at a lot of manuals and other analog gear. I don't think that there is any analog gear that is 24 bit because you've got to take away the noise. You've got to take away the THD and all the other stuff, okay? So if there is no analog that does 24 bit, then why do we need 24 bit for running analog through it? And that brings me on to the comparison, okay? Now, if that thing over there has enough dynamic range, okay, to deal with the DBX168 or any other analog device that I've put into it so far, where would the degradation of audio quality be? Where is the degradation of audio? Now, this is where I'm glad I've done tests because I was actually able to find out something very, very vital for me, very vital, especially for all of you Audion ID14 users out there. This is very, very important, okay? Now, the annoying thing about that is that you cannot bypass the preamps, okay? The, from what I read, the preamps are connected to the converter, but the preamps are very, 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 very clean. Very, very clean with a very low noise floor, okay? There's actually a chart, I'll stick it here, right? Um, an, an audio engineer friend of mine shared this to me, it was Julian Krauss that made it and done all these measurements, okay? Remember, all of this stuff can be measured. Now, as you can see, right, from this, the Audion ID14 does very, very, very well for the price. Look at the black lion that just came out there. Have a look at that, right? Okay, think about the price difference in there. Audion ID14 is very, very, very clean. So if the preamps are very, very clean and it has enough dynamic range, okay, to be able to print the analog device, okay, the analog unit that I've fed into it, then where's the degradation? So I had to do a test. This is very, 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 very important. And I'm very glad I've done this part of the test. I recorded this at 48K which is what I normally record it. I've watched lots of videos and people say, there's no need to record at 48K compared to 96K and 192K, blah, 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 blah. Now, in Plugin Doctor, there's a use hardware button, okay? So because I had all that plugged in, I was actually able to see the linear frequency response of the ID14. Now, have a look at this, okay? At 48K, have a look at the linear frequency response, okay? Now, I can't bypass the preamps, so it's not completely flat. So I know there's going to be a slight difference, okay? And that, to me, is where the degradation part comes in, okay? It's not in the conversion. It's not in the conversion. Linear frequency response. That's where you're not going to get a perfect null. So as you can see, I've got a roll-off in the lows, and but it's the highs that worries me. And then I spoke to another engineer, and he was like, Paul, try putting it to 96K, because it'll probably be an anti-aliasing filter. Now, obviously, we're going from analog to digital. Aliasing is just not in plugins, okay? It's in this as well, because you've got to remember it's analog to digital, in the digital domain. So to prevent aliasing at 48K, what they've done is they've done um, a low-pass filter, okay? So you're rolling off some highs. But the problem is with that, that it's about at 15K, and at, probably at the most, it's, it's rolling off as much as uh, 0 0.8 dB. In a mix, you're probably not going to hear it. But the problem is, if you're wanting like-for-like like conversion, and you're printing an analog gear, you don't really want extra added-in um, high-end roll-off. So I put it at 96K, and there you go. Have a look at that. As you can see, the aliasing filter shifts, okay? It shifts because you've just widened the frequency spectrum, all right? So as you can see, instead of being like 0 0.8 dB, it's like, at the most, it's like 0 0.1, and it's actually shifted. At that, you're not going to hear um, that high-end roll-off there. Like 0 0.1 of a dB, it's nothing. It's really nothing. So knowing that, I had to then obviously record them, okay? Which is what I'm going to show you now first, okay? I've got the converted version at 48K and also the converted version at 96K printed at that at different sample rates. Just listen to this. She never applied for pictures or portraits. 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 Now, hopefully what you can hear is that there is a high-end roll-off at 48K. I can hear it. It sounds darker. And as soon as I go back to the original, I could hear the I could hear that lack of um, high end. 
I can hear it. And at 96k, it sounds way, way closer to the original source. That high end is there. To the point where I don't really think you would be able to hear the difference. It's very, very close, but I can definitely hear the difference at 48k. So to get closer to the hardware, you should be printing analog units at 96k if you're printing analog units via an Audion ID14. Then I was like, right, okay, I know that difference. So I thought, know what to do. I'll go to Access Analog because they let you... Now, by the way, you can do this for free yourself, okay? If you um, sign up with Access Analog and you have the Analog Matrix plugin that works in your DAW, you can stream lossless... Um, analog gear, okay? I've done loads already. Now, they have got the Lynx. What is it again? Now, Access Analog have the Lynx Aurora, okay? Which is two and a half grand, eight channels, okay? Eight channels, two and a half thousand smackaroons. Now, this is a fantastic tool if you want to run your mix through um, an expensive high grade converter. Okay, because it's free of charge and it's just got to be available and you could do it offline or you can just record straight to a track, which is what I done here. So I put the original source through the analog converters and back into the digital domain and printed it. And what I am going to show you now is a null test, okay? So what I've done is I have ensured, I have zoomed <laughs> into the waveforms to ensure that everything is bang on time-wise, completely bang on, as close as you're going to get. Okay, as close as you're physically going to get to ensure that the waveforms match up perfectly. Okay, because that can affect the null. And I've also tweaked levels slightly if need be, just to ensure I've got the best null. The one that's quietest is going to be the most transparent to the signal. It's going to be the one that is most close to the signal. So, let's do the null test. ID14, 48k, 96k, and the Lynx Aurora via Access Analog. Which one has the most transparent conversion? Let's find out. She never applied for pictures or portraits. She never applied for pictures or portraits. She never applied for pictures or portraits. Now, wasn't that very, 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 very surprising? Very surprising indeed. At 48k, it just shows you the difference. Honestly, there is as much as like 4 or 5 dB of a difference in the null. It just shows you how important that kind of high-end roll-off is and how much it's affecting, and it actually is a kind of a degradation of, of the signal. But how amazing is the difference between the links, right? 24 bit or whatever it is, right? Versus that at 96k. It's true, I've just proved it. I've just proved it. The Audion ID14 is more transparent and closer to the source than a two and a half thousand pound converter, right? It's done. I've just done it, right? You can say what you like. It's 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 done. It is what it is. It is what it is, right? Even with through the preamps, that Audion ID14 at 96k gives you more transparent conversion than a Lynx Aurora. Lynx converters. And I might be controversial about my way to say right now. Having not tried all of the converters, but what I am going to say is it is blatantly obvious that all of this transparent stuff about high-grade converters is bullshit. It must be bullshit. Because the amount of people that I've spoke to about converters, and they say this to me, they're like, Paul, the converters sound better. They make the source sound better. They make my analog gear sound better. That's not transparent. Now, this is probably going to like turn into a massive debate and I'm going to get pure nailed by analog guys, but look, the truth of it is, if your audio sounds better to you, right, then it's not transparent, right? But what you need to learn is what we talked about earlier about um, these converters only kind of being able to reproduce what's fed into it, that it's not, like, the sound that you hear it isn't stuff that's missing from the analog. You're, these converters don't give you anything that's missing from the analog. A lot of people say, I know, but like, like the, surely the links must be better because it's worth two and a half grand, right? right? Okay. Let's just put this into context, okay? The links, right, that I quoted at two and a half grand, that's got eight channels. So what you've got to remember that all these big analog engineers, the reason that they spend thousands on converters is because they've got a crap ton of analog gear, okay? That can only do two channels, right? Two channels. If you have tons of analog gear and you want to run them all at the same time, then you're going to be a crap ton of money because you're going to need all those channels, okay? Home studio engineers, right? You've got to remember that these guys need these converters because of the channels, okay? They've got a crap ton of gear. I don't need it, right? I don't need it. 
Like, I have one. I have one analog gear just now, right? And if you're a home studio engineer like me, and you've maybe got, like, maybe two or three pieces of analog gear, and you just print through them every so often, then that's all you're going to need. There's nothing wrong with it. And I guarantee there's probably nothing wrong with the Scarlet, the Focusrite Scarlet, the Universal Audio Apollos, again. There'll be nothing wrong with those as well. There's been there's a converter test that's, that's fantastic. Okay, again, listen to it, right? Listen to that thing. Um, if, uh, what was it like? I think he like prints it and loops it like 500 times to like go through the audio degradation. Okay, even like that thing looped 50 times. It's very, very good converters. It's very clean. Now, if you want an even better level of conversion, and you're, like, you're an audience user, I'm pretty sure the Audient ID22, which is the kind of the big brother of that, you can bypass the preamps. I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure I read you can do that. Which, again, you, you're not going to have that linear frequency response of the preamps. It's going to be completely clean, and you should get almost, that it should really null even better than that. Okay, so there are ways of doing it. But just to let you know, you can, guys, I'm telling you, right, don't let these analog Luddites get inside your head that you're missing out on details, that you're not as good a mixer because of what you can afford. And guys, if you are printing analog gear um, through audio interfaces, then again, invest in stuff like Plugin Doctor or something like that, where you can test it, you can see what's going on, test it. That Any time you buy a piece of gear, test it. Find out its limitations. We do it with plugins, you should do it with everything. Test it, right? Have fun. I had fun doing this, right? I now know that um, the linear frequency response is flatter at 96k, okay? So for me, recording at 96k is better, especially if you're printing analog gear and you're not wanting that high-end roll-off. I know that because I've tested it. All right. Again, guys, thank you very much. I know I'm probably going to get quite a bit of shit for this video, but no, what, whatever, right? That's what it's all about. I learn stuff and I kind of want to kind of give that back to you as well, right? Just so you don't have to go through all the fucking shit I need to go through. So guys, like and hopefully subscribe if you've liked this video. So, so many videos I've done, okay? And I'm going to finish the video with the final test. This is actually the audio itself printed through so you can actually hear the differences yourself. Okay, again, guys, let me know your comments down below. I'm going to get a bit of shit, but know what? Just let it be, okay? That's what it is, right? So guys, like, subscribe, and I'll see you again next week. She never applied for pictures or portraits. 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 She never applied for pictures or portraits.